from elizabethmadethis.com. Today I'm going to take you inside my husband's suit jacket for uh, the Doctor Who project that I'm working on. And I have to bag the lining and do a couple of other things, but before Daddy. I do that, I am going to take you inside all of the tailoring guts that have gone into this project. Um, there are many, many, many hours. I, I think tailoring is not something that you do casually oh. on a Tuesday. So let's let's take a look at what's what's inside and what's all going into this jacket. And I will see you in a little bit. Okay, let's talk about the pants. First off, we've got these really really nice back welt pockets, which are really yeah. They took some time, but hey, they they they, they turned out really nice. I'm pretty proud of those. Um, and also, I've got some different fun facing fabric for my for my back pockets. Okay, but now let's get to the issue. Well, no, actually, before we do that, let's talk about the pretty waistband. So, if the inside facing on the waistband is this really beautiful kind of situation that the pattern suggested using a men's shirt as as the right as the the, the inside of, of the waistband construction. And then the, I guess the on-screen trousers have these these pretty different ribbons on the inside so I used some seam some seam tape for my inside because that's that's what I had and then I and then I used some bias tape for the bottom the, the bottom bit but I think it's a really beautiful inside waistband now let's get to the problem okay so when my husband tried these on what we discovered was that the the inside hip pockets gaped a little bit when when he was wearing them it's because he needs more room in his in his high hip than the you know the pattern had waist for so i could reduce the seam the seam allowance but i only had five eighths of an inch seam allowance so if you take you can take your seam allowance down to three eighths usually without any kind of a problem but when you get into the the quarter inch then what can happen is that the the seams will kind of burst because that's too much stress on on that seam so instead i decided to widen the seam allowance with some extra fabric. So I grabbed the selvages of my fabric and I just, I sewed, the, I, I zigzagged them right over the top of my original surged seam allowance and, and that gave me a little bit more width to deal, to play with in the, in the, in the seams. And then I, that means that I can move my original seam line from over here to right to the edge of where my my surge line is. So hopefully that little bit will give my husband the extra width that he needs so the pockets don't you know expand out in the wearing. Fingers crossed, right? Okay, so let's talk about the inside bit of the jacket. So this is my lining, it's all ready to go. I so I'm ready to bag today after I fix an issue with the collar, which I'll, which I'll show you in a bit. So I've got some inside welt pockets uh, that are inside of the lining, which is really cool. And that's pretty much it for the lining. The lining's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot, uh, you know, exciting about the lining. But, okay, let's talk about the inside bit, though, of all of the jacket. So you can see that I've got all this, all this bit of hair canvas. And what is hair canvas and why should you be using it in your jackets? Well, hair canvas is this kind of interfacing. You can see it's a lot, it's a lot thicker, it's a lot more um, malleable than regular fusible interfacing is. And it's gonna add a lot of support to your jacket. I got this stuff from Fashion Sewing Supply, uh, which is an online re retailer. I think she's out of New York. She has literally the best interfacing. And when I priced it out, I, it, it was it, it was pricey to begin with, but ultimately this is this canvas is so wide that you can get multiple jackets out of out of just one yard, which you can't with most places that are selling you hair canvas because they only offer it in like 22 inches, which is absurd. Like you can't you could probably do a collar uh, 
for for that but if you want to do the fronts of a jacket like you really need to for the right kind of support you need to order multiple multiple yards and so this ends up being a lot more economical to use it so for the for the front part of the lapels the hair canvas is cut just just on the normal straight grain and then you can see I've got all these little tiny tiny stitches let me zoom in a little bit I've got all these tiny little stitches and these the, these stitches are called um, pad stitches so with the pad stitches you can see I've got all these tiny tiny little little pricks all that that of where the the fabric the stitches are coming through to the other side this isn't going to be seen in the final jacket but what this does is that all these stitches kind of shape shape the lapel so that it is going to stay flat in the wearing so my uh, you know you can think of it is that it's just it's all these tiny little shaping stitches and you know the fabric starts as a straight line but we but the body our bodies have curve to them and so all the pad stitches are adding that gentle gentle curve and and ultimately just adding that that structure that's going to help it stay stay flat in the wearing which is what everybody wants in a tailored jacket right okay so on the inside of that i've got shoulder pads and these are made from fusible fleece I love using fusible fleece in my jackets because you can make a shoulder pad really pretty much any thickness that you want and then you shape it over over a tailor's ham and it pretty much holds this holds the shape without having to do anything I did go ahead and add more pad stitching to this just to add that extra shape so that it's just gonna sit so nicely on the inside of the jacket and then the the big issue that I'm gonna have to deal with is the under collar so we've got more pad stitching here and and this you can see that there's the roll line and that's where the jacket is gonna is gonna sit and and flip over right at the collar and that's that neck edge it's gonna be so nice and after I did all the pad stitching I, I went and I, and I shaped it over a, a tailor's ham and then just steamed it really really well and I steamed the edges of the of the under collar so that they would sit flat in the wearing but again I mean all these all these little tiny stitches are gonna shape shape the under collar so that it just sits well okay here's my issue with the under collar so the the pattern suggested you using you use a a melton under call it's called under collar melton and that's usually black <coughs> So I didn't have any of that, obviously, and I forgot to get it when I was getting supplies for my jacket. So I just had this kind of, it's, it's a boiled wool, and I, I have this left over from, from a jacket that I made for my, for my son um, a few years ago, actually several years ago now. And it's actually, it's a great weight, and it made for a really beautiful under collar. But the problem is, is that once I add my pinstripe over it, it's got it's got enough it's got enough roll that it's going to cover it right now but i have to remember that this is this is without the seam allowance so with the with the seam allowance it's going to show a little bit of this on the underside of the jacket now normally i really love a contrast on my under collars but in this particular case i do not want that and i'm not really sure why the pattern said just use just go ahead and, and not cut yourself an under collar from the from from the fashion fabric I really I really don't know the the upper collar is indeed wider so it will cover it pretty pretty well um, due to the turn of the cloth but it's not going to cover it entirely so what I'm gonna have to do is take out that whole seam which kind of stinks because I've, I've like really carefully pressed open those seam allowances and cut them down so I'm gonna have to be really careful when I reattach I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a pinstriped version of the under collar and then st stitch it to it on, on the other side. I'm not gonna waste the, this beautiful tailoring work. Um, I'm just gonna add the pinstripe over it and kind of end uh, baste the, the edges of my under collar and go ahead and, and reshape the the under collar with on my ham um, after it's got the pinstripe on it and then hopefully that will be enough that when I add that it will cover cover everything but that's my inside guts for the whole jacket 
And in my next video, I will show you the finished product. So magically, I have my completed suit jacket. It was not magic, it took a long time, but that's okay because I, I know that now I can make a suit if I would want to do that in the future, which I probably will at some point. The doctor also wears a brown suit, so that'd be nice to, to make for my husband. And now since I've gone through the process, I can kind of streamline things a little bit and that'll be, that'll be nice. But if you want to read all of the gory details of all of the everything that went into the suit, plus see all of us in our full Halloween gear, then you can check it out on my website at elizabethmadethis.com. And yeah, if you like this video, if it was really cool to see the inside of a suit workings and a tailor jacket in progress, then give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you later.